<laughs> yeah, kind of, huh? Yeah, right? yeah. We got some big news. Really big news. I'm so I'm excited. This is pretty exciting. We're giving you guys a sneak preview of what this big news is. So, uh, what's the are, big news? Are we allowed to do it right now? Uh, yeah, by the time we're done with this, I think it'll be okay. Oh, okay, all right. Big reveal. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that looks like a mission planning application. Yeah, absolutely. But also it kind of looks familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Like, aside from being a new mission planner system. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. It's kind of hard for folks to see that, though, uh, on the screen there. So uh, maybe should we, we should throw just... throw it up? Yeah, let's, let's, let's uh, throw it up on the screen here. So Autel is releasing the beta version of their mission planning tool, and we are very excited about it. We've uh, had a little bit of a sneak preview into it. And now all of you can have input into what's happening with the Autel mission planning tool. So you have some time to, to check into it and give some feedback to the folks at, at Autel so that we can make this be the awesome mission planning tool it is. So one of the things that we're super excited about is the fact that this makes it a lot more available to us to work with uh, various mapping and modeling tools that are out there. And, and of course, our favorite Pix4D. Yes, absolutely. So let's, uh, can we throw that up on the screen and show people exactly what's going on here? Sure, absolutely. Well, this is going to be the uh, the beta software uh, 1.0.1.33 uh, for the Explorer application. And uh, of course, this is going out into beta. Um, so you will be able to utilize it for, what was what it, a couple weeks? Yeah, I think so. Be, be good for a couple weeks. Out. So users out there will be able to use it and also comment in the, the uh, Facebook forum and, and directly to the folks at Autel. Absolutely. All right, so as we open up the Autel Explorer app, you'll be greeted, of course, by the, uh, the fantastic imagery they've actually taken with the Evo. Um, so as you're seeing this, this, this is amazing. I, I love this stuff. Um, anyways, we're looking down on the bottom, and you have uh, two different options. Your camera option, which gets you into the drone itself when you are connected, and you have a mission option, which is something that's new, right? Let's go ahead and just jump into that mission. And first, you're going to be greeted by... Um, just this uh, splash screen, which lets you do a regular or a rectangular route, right, to create a new mission. I've already created a single mission, so we can go in there. Great. Now, so to, to interrupt, pardon yeah. me for interrupting, but so right now in the beta version, it's only capable of capturing grid based missions. Correct. All right. And then, uh, of course, after you have more missions, you're going to see more of them slide on the bottom. So it'll populate with missions that you've planned in the past. Yes, absolutely. So that's pretty important because when you plan missions and you save those missions, if you want to return to that location and fly the exact same mission over again, that's really important, and especially for those of you that are involved in uh, real estate development or if you're in construction and, and that kind of a thing. Now, law enforcement won't find that necessarily so useful because you're not going to refly the same accident scene twice. However, this is it, it is storable, and then we can offload these missions to be put into an evidentiary file as well, so it becomes yes. a part of the, the case file. Okay. Absolutely. Moving on. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump into the mission that I've already created. You simply just tap onto it, and of course, on the very top, you have uh, some different telemetry data. You've got your battery, uh, your height, your distance, you know, uh, the speed, depending on how fast you're flying. Mm -hmm. um, on the left-hand side here, you will normally see your map. Currently, we don't have... Um, a device connected to it, and this is why there's no map showing up um, for the time being. Um, let's see, so we've got our grid mission already set up here, and of course you can zoom in and zoom out, just like you can with many other mapping softwares. Yep. Uh, you can rotate, so if I decide I want to fly this at a... Uh, north, south, instead of east, north, north, south, right? If but I why, is that, why is that important? Well, it, it, there's a lot of different reasons, but the primary reason is that you don't want to be flying directly into the wind or directly out of the wind. What's going to happen is if you do that, your drone is going to get pushed around, right? Yeah. And it's going to mess up your, your grid pattern. Right. So it's always best that the best to, practice is to crab. Right, to right? crab that. And, and this holds true regardless of, of which kind of mission planning software or what kind of aircraft you have. Hexacopters are a little less susceptible to uh, winds that are driving the, t you know, basically tailwinds and headwinds. However, all aircraft really should be set up to crab in the mission as opposed to a, a headwind or a tailwind. Right. And it's very easy to change it here. Yeah. I saw how you were just rotating that. That's right. very slick. So there's a little tiny, uh, let's say I grabbed the wrong point there. You can grab there the little tiny arrow. There you go. Yeah. And just rotate it. If I want to fly it here because we've got winds coming out of either the east or the west. So we're kind of crabbing to the side. On the very bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see your distance. So this is the total distance flown from start to finish. Then you have your estimated time and the waypoint. So currently we're looking at about uh, 21, 21 right, 21 and a half minutes. So that's that's pretty good for a battery. That's not bad at all. Gets you time to get up and get everything set up for your camera. Yeah. Uh, on the right hand side, 
You can save your uh, the specific name that you'd like to have. Uh, currently, it's just uh, 1771 East Flamingo. So that's the loca- that's that's, location that's, that's, that you happen to be at. Yeah, and that's just how yeah. you choose to name whatever it is. If you have a project number, uh, that would always be a good thing to put in here as well. You can adjust the height, uh, the different speeds. I think we need to get them to change that from height to altitude. Yeah, yes. Yeah. There's, there's a couple things. And remember, this is beta. This is not the finalized right. Um, you know, mission planning software. This is just getting into the step. What's well, the value of beta is because people can now use it and make comments like yes. we're, we're making now to, to get a few things changed. Okay. Absolutely. So we've got uh, altitude or elevation. Yeah. The, the elevation altitude. And speed. Yep. Okay. And we also have the uh, the course side lap ratio. Currently, I've got it set to 75%. Okay. Um, I like to shoot anywhere from 75 to 80%, depending on the situation. Okay. And of course, you can bring that all the way back down to 10%, which I would never, ever suggest. But you've got plenty of room to uh, to move your sliders around and customize this to what you need and, and what your uh, client ultimately is going to need for uh, for your yep. resolution. Then you can go through for your camera action. You have either the time lapse or none. Uh, and then, of course, you can do your uh, your finish action. So currently it's set to go to home or you can select hover, depending on how you have your altitude uh, return to home set up. And then simply, after you're uh, all connected with your aircraft, on the very center, on the very bottom of the blue button, you hit fly, and off it goes. Outstanding. Pretty simple. So I, I'm impressed with how you know how simple it is so far. And of course, we've been involved in the development of several mission planning apps in the past. I look forward to, to seeing some, some changes with this. But it seems like out of the gate, they've got the basic tools that we need to have, which, you know, again, opens that door. But what's more important, and I think what's more valuable, is those of you that are watching this, those of you that download the beta, you can uh, either make comments directly to the folks at Autel. You can also leave your comments uh, down below, and we will make sure that we pass those along to the product development team at Autel. So you've got a couple of different ways to, to reach out to those folks. Yes. And you know, we'll be working with, the, with them on this application or continue to be working with them on this application. Uh, I'm excited to capture more data with it and put it into you know, Pix4D and see what that looks like. Right. That's kind of our favorite modeling tool. But do, do, do these images, does this capture method work with anything besides Pix4D? Works with any photogrammetry software at all. Great. So if we want to put this into uh, Drone Deploy or Agisoft or into Photo Modeler or any one of the uh, myriad or recap online, and, right. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's tons and tons of the different software out there. This is simply just a way to acquire the data. When you have the data, then you get to use whatever system that you are comfortable with. Well, I can't wait to see what the beta looks like say, 30 days from now after folks have had the next couple of weeks to talk about it. So again, you can contact Autel. Um, we're going to put the link later on in, in the podcast down below. Uh, it's still beta and it's not released to the public, but it will be least released to the public in, I think, what, the next 24 hours? Yeah. Which is why we kind of get to talk about close. it now. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> okay, and so you'll be able to click on the link, download the, uh, the software to your, your mobile device and, and install it. Pretty exciting stuff. Please let Autel know what you're looking for. And I, knowing their customer service, I think they're going to do their best to, to meet the majority of requests. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. They've been really responsive to the things we've talked about. So we're certainly looking forward to the next couple of weeks. So make sure you download the application if you've got an Evo and give it a go. All right, folks. Well, thanks for watching. And until next week, subscribe and fly soon. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,